Hello. How are you doing? Welcome back, friends. It's been a couple of days since I last shared a presentation with you. Let me just welcome all of you who are new. Are you ready to seek understanding, friends, of the end times? As foretold by the prophets of old in the Holy Bible, if you are, then I say welcome. Welcome today and thank you for being here as together we will delve deeper into this important subject of Bible prophecy. So if you're a first time viewer or a long time subscriber, I hope you find value in what I have to say today. So sit back and buckle up, I say. Today's primary, primary message is a lot to do with what the Bible says about Israel and the surrounding nations because we know that the Lord Jesus is returning, yes, and there's a specific location where he returns. In fact, before I begin with the news update, you see this location here in the Middle East? This is where the Lord is going to return. So whether you are a believer, a Christian, or whether you are a non-believer, we believe in the Bible. We believe that there are certain prophetic scriptures that declare details about the return of the Lord Jesus. And there's some interesting details about the events prior to his return. And of course, the events that unfold when he actually returns. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about today, and it took me a while preparing this, of course, I've been ever, ever so busy, but this is a priority. A lot of what I'm going to share with you today is about Israel and Saudi Arabia. What's the situation currently? Well, if you've been following my messages, you know that I've spoken a lot about this region, East Jerusalem. Yes, East Jerusalem is a part of the the policy that world leaders united nations what have you the surrounding nations surrounding israel want to enforce which is the two state solution and in the two state solution this part of jerusalem divided is east jerusalem this is the territory that the palestinian campaign want to claim for their own capital palestine now it's no surprise then that this region is going to continue to have a lot of problems. <clears throat> Seven hours ago, I was reading some latest reports. In fact, I had to narrow this down again because the messages I've got up here on the other side, I've deleted those tabs now, are regarding Turkey, the situation with Turkey, but I'm going to have to save that for another video. Voices raised. Let's just have a look at the headlines. I think it's best if we go through the headlines as opposed to reading each article because it takes a long time. Ben Gavir said to clash with Prime Minister, cops on East Jerusalem demolitions. So he's upset about it. But Netanyahu is also under a lot of pressure, right, to appease because he wants to form a peace treaty or some sort of normalization with Saudi Arabia a very complicated situation the whole region is a mess basically far-right minister shrugs off Netanyahu's concerns over international pressure says he's tired of policy appeasement orders a call-up of three reserve pol border police companies national security minister Ben Gavir has clashed in recent days with both Prime Minister and Israeli Police Commissioner over his demands to set up the demolition. This is going to be a big problem if this goes ahead. To set up the demolition of illegally built Palestinian homes in East Jerusalem. Multiple reports said that in both cases, conversations were heated and voices were raised. So they had a big argument about this, right? Why is this so important? Because at the same time, friends, I was looking at some images to bring up for visual aid purposes. I'm going to come to this. At the same time, there was this terrorist attack. 
and at the same time Israel is trying to bring Saudi Arabia to enter into the Abraham Accords. So at a time like this, what's the prophetic significance? Should we be pondering and wondering, huh, what's going to happen next? As you know, and as I've said repeatedly, I believe, and this is my personal opinion, by the way, according to my understanding of the scriptures about the end times, this is what I see is going to happen. I could be wrong. In order for Israel to enter into this Abraham Accords, let's say, I believe two particular thorns in the side of Israel need to be brought to the discussion table. Number one is the rebuilding of the temple. Number two is the security barrier. I believe eventually these two are going to be discussed. How soon? I don't know. But I think in order for Israel to move forward and for the Palestinians to move forward regarding this two-state solution, that needs to be talked about. It needs to be on the discussion table. Otherwise, it's never going to end. But according to the scripture, we know that East Jerusalem is going to be taken. Half of the city will go into captivity. Yes, we'll go to these scriptures in just a moment. I want you to take a good look at this map I've got up. Take a good look at it. <clears throat> Top left corner, we've got Europe, yes. And consider that region in Bible prophecy land, those who promote the idea that the Antichrist is going to arise from this part of the world. And consider the top right corner, those who say, no, it's going to be Russian Antichrist, Gog, Magog, Rosh. And then consider all the region highlighted in this yellow. Hmm. Ask yourself this question. What part of this map is directly a threat to the existence of the state of Israel today? What region poses a threat? What part of our world today is pushing the agenda for the two-state solution for the division of Jerusalem, east and west, to slice up the city for themselves. What region today is bent on this division of the city of Jerusalem? Not only that, we know, if you looked up the Hamas charter, we know that the agenda is more than just dividing it. It's to eliminate the Jews, yes? <clears throat> so I propose to you, like I have done over and over on, on this channel, it's been over three years now, this region, all highlighted in yellow, is what the scriptures talk to us about being the enemies of Christ. Yes, because the enemies of Israel are the enemies of the Lord God. Because whatever happens in this part of the world, the Lord takes it extremely personally. East Jerusalem, my goodness, can you hear that aeroplane out there? That's loud. I hope you don't hear that. So currently, Israel's home demolitions a war on nerves for the Palestinians. So this could just erupt and cause more problems. But I want to know the bigger picture. The bigger picture in terms of what the Bible says. Now, I've mentioned this at the time, two or three years ago, about the organization of Islamic Corporation. It's like the Islamic version of the United Nations, right? Well, back in Istanbul in 2017, the leaders of the Islamic world got together and they decided that they were going to preempt the recognition 
of East Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. They declared East Jerusalem the capital of Palestine under occupation and urged the US to withdraw from the peace process and back down from its Jerusalem decision in a statement issued following an extraordinary summit in Istanbul on Wednesday. So this was back in 2017. So what are we going to do about this? They've already recognised it in their world that East Jerusalem is the Palestinian capital. We've recognised it. We want the United Nations and the US to back off this peace deal, this peace process. Because according to these leaders, it's a done deal, right? So this is what we're dealing with. Now, mind you, I've got to say this. Remember, remember friends, that the Lord Jesus Christ, he's a God of mercy the God of truth, the God of compassion. But he's also a man of war. So we've got to use discernment. We have to be very careful in our approach. My message is when I critique Islam or when I speak things that are very negative in a negative light is because that we need to scrutinize the prophetic scriptures and as best as possible speak by critiquing Islam and not the Muslims. We love the Muslims. We pray for their salvation. There are a people group, a mixture of cultures, languages, a very diverse people groups, right? And they are very much suffering right now. They're suffering on in all aspects, spiritually, physically, emotionally, psychologically, Financially, I mean, the world in the Islamic world is very much a suffering region. However, we need to bear in mind that everything that is happening is according to the Lord's will, his purposes. You see, when the father gave his son, his only begotten son, he gave him up for the whole world. That means he does not desire anyone to perish but in his will, he wants everyone to come unto salvation. A few days ago, January the 30th. So this ben controversial new position angers the Arab world. But how will it impact a potential peace deal with Saudi Arabia? Talk about timing, right? He's stirring the pot. It's the inconvenience right now. Because at a time where Saudi Arabia is building this... Um, reputation in the region in order to become a big player with Israel there are problems note this piece was written before the terrorist attack in Jerusalem on January the 27th okay so they updated it let's read this paragraph I expect we'll see an agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia this year said former ambassador to the UN and Likud party Knesset member Danny Danon back in December 2022, soon after Benjamin Netanyahu had formed the government. Danon was echoing Netanyahu's previous statements made before and after November 2022 elections in Israel, which stressed the importance of the Abraham Accords and, in particular, his interest in normalising relations with Riyadh. But the nature of the current coalition is quite radical, consisting of the most far-right elements of the Israeli political map. They promise to speed up settlement construction in the West Bank and are calling for the elimination of those who finance terror. Hmm. Consequently, there are many questions regarding the existing peace agreements between Israel and the Arab world and also, can I say, those who disagree dis agree with this view that the Antichrist, the Islamic beast, is a thing worthy to be considered say well the Jews will never receive a Muslim to enter into a peace treaty or they say the Islamic world will never um, worship a man and Israel will never enter into a pre um, receive a Messiah who is Muslim basically is what they're saying which is a misunderstanding of the scriptures a totally misunderstood narrative but it's the most popular narrative 
We know that Israel and the Arab world have entered into numerous peace deals. Who else are they making peace treaties with if not the surrounding neighbours? Because it's the surrounding neighbours, friends, who have a problem with the state of Israel, the Jewish state of Israel. And all of this is prophetic, right? Consequently, there are many questions regarding the existing peace agreements between Israel and the Arab world, as well as any future agreements. Will Netanyahu find the desired equilibrium between the radical politics of his coalition partner and diplomacy with Arab capitals? And then after that report, escalating violence and right-wing provocations are, the th are threatening Netanyahu's Abraham Accords agenda. It's a spanner in the works for him, right? But then, soon after that, earlier last week, there was a beacon of hope for the Abraham Accords because now Sudan is back in, in discussions because there was a time when Sudan was not confirmed as one of the signatories to the Abraham Accords because they had their own internal political issues. But now... Israel-Sudan agreement is a success for the Abraham Accords and a setback for Iran. But we know what the scriptures tell us in Ezekiel 38. Eventually, this nation is going to form a part of the coalition that comes to invade Israel and Sheba and Dedan, which is in Arabia. So it looks all hunky-dory at the moment. But like I said the first time when Sudan came to the table to sign this accord, not to be too excited. Undeclared regional alignment with the UAE in Saudi Arabia is enabling Khartoum in, in Sudan to develop relations with Jerusalem. Happy days. But then shortly after that, let me refresh, continue. Shortly after that, it's because I had the tab open for so long. <laughs> Saudi Arabia still won't commit. So on the one hand, we've got this beacon of hope, right? There's a possibility that we can get this Abraham Accords to be a very good, successful endeavor, get all the Arab nations to work together with Israel, thus resulting in peace and security in the region, which also results in prosperity. Mm-hmm. Prime Minister Netanyahu has made no secret of his hope that Saudi Arabia will be the next Arab state to sign up to the Abraham Accords. What will be the compromise that Saudi Arabia taking this huge step? What do you expect the demands of the kingdom in Saudi Arabia will be? The two-state solution and the status quo which will cause problems between Saudi Arabia, Israel and Jordan. Jordan likes to consider itself still the custodian of the Temple Mount region, right? He is reported to discuss the issue with US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on January 19 and no doubt did so with US Secretary of State Antony Blinken when he was in Israel recently. They are also considered they also considered no doubt the contribution of Saudi Saudi's foreign minister to a meeting at the World Economic Forum. <clears throat> Saudi Arabia and Iran, long rivals for dominance in the Muslim world, severed relations in 2016 but for a full year started in 2021. Officials from the two countries held direct talks that looked like they were coming to the table. The season of normalisation, yes? So it's almost like taking one step forward and three steps back with these nations. I don't want to read too much. Let's read this. We have said consistently that we believe normalisation with Israel is something that is very much in the interest of the region, he said. <clears throat> the Saudi prince is saying this. However, true normalisation... And true stability will only come through giving the Palestinians hope through the giving of the Palestinians dignity. I messed up the wording there. That requires giving the Palestinians a state, basically. That's the priority. Given the establishment of a sovereign Palestine 
on territories overrun by Israel during the Six-Day War, namely the West Bank, Gaza Strip and East Jerusalem, and just a resolution of the Palestinian refugee issue, the API promises full normalisation of relations between the Muslim world and Israel, the Arab Peace Initiative. Meanwhile, this movement, Free Free Palestine, <clears throat> excuse me, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which is, in other words, calling for the ethnic cleansing or a genocide of a Jewish people. Because from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is talking about between the river and the sea, you're talking about all of Israel being free of the Jews. That's when Palestine will be free. So understand that this is a very deep, dark, spiritual battle taking place. How would the word of God help us, enlighten us to understand what will become of this? We know. Where do you think is headed? Take a guess. The division of the state, the division of the city. This is where we are headed. This city is going to be divided, friends. So buckle up, be prepared. I believe it's going to happen through invasion. It could happen through a coalition government in Israel. There could be a Muslim Brotherhood leader <clears throat> who gets into the government. Who knows? But I believe it's going to happen through violence. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia is still continuing to build on its future plans for Neom City because they are they are also have a vision a massive new smart city in the Arabian desert I'm giving you a backdrop before we get into the scriptures so we can understand the picture the bigger picture just like how when I get on the map here we zoom in and we zoom out I like to zoom out I like to see the bigger picture of things because we can get tunnel vision, right? I like to zoom out and um, reflect and have a good look around and then we go back in. <laughs> we go back in because the Lord God is interested in the details as well as the bigger picture. Do you follow what I'm saying? So, Neom City, Saudi Arabia, moving on. <clears throat> Everything you need to know about Saudi's meg mega project Neom seven hours ago updated on this website. Travel off path three days ago. Saudi Arabia is developing a massive new smart city in the Arabian Desert and along the Red Sea. Hmm, very prophetic location. Mystery Babylon, Babylon the Great, is in this location. Is it? going to be Neom City or is this a bigger region including Mecca I think it's both friends <clears throat> but let's be clear the actual entity of the harlot is also a city it's not meant to be spiritualized it's an actual city which is what makes me think it could be Neom City and I've said it before I've done videos on it Neon releases short film on construction progress of Saudi Arabia's four mega cities. So I was on their website. If we go to their website, Neom is real. So let me see if I can play this. Hold on. <clears throat> Where's my volume? Okay, let's see how we're doing. Neom is real. Play it again. Can you hear that, friends? Neom is real. The future of work, living, and sustainability is coming to life. The master plan is being realized more every day. A project unique in scale, already being built in a place with 95% of land protected for nature, where rewilding is in motion, bringing animals back to their natural habitat.
luxury island destination Sindala has launched. As has Trojana, our mountain destination, the line, our flagship city, and our center for advanced industries, Oxygen. Things are changing fast. In 2022, we launched companies including Tonimus, our world-leading tech and digital enterprise, and Enoa, responsible for managing NEOM's first-class sustainable energy and water systems, featuring the world's largest green hydrogen production plant. This progressive stance is why we invested $175 million in Volocopter, the next generation of transport. It's why some 200,000 people are expected to attend the captivating exhibitions for the line. It's why athletes from 25 countries participated in the Neon Beach Games. And it's why the planet's fastest growing lifestyle brand, Ennis Moore, has become the first hotel partner for Trojana. Already, Saudia offers direct flights from Neon to London and Dubai. Our media sector has supported 25 productions in 18 months, working with names such as the BBC, Apple TV, and NBC. Neom has partnered with McLaren to drive innovation and talent development in electric motorsport. We joined Ocean X to discover and protect the secrets hidden at the bottom of the Red Sea. With the Asian Football Confederation, we launched the Shahab Community Program to develop the next generation of Saudi footballing talent. Trojana has been awarded the Asian Winter Games in 2029, and there is so much more to come. We can elevate life because we have a blank canvas. This is not business as usual. This is the new future. This is Neom. Visit neom.com. Does um does that sound like Babylon the Great to you, friends? Seriously? Babylon is the city and by looking at the scriptures in the book of Revelation, it's a very luxurious city. It's the place where it seems that the whole world is going to flock to. And like I've said, I've termed it the world's new safe zone. As though the world, the rest of the world is going to go through some sort of cataclysmic event, economic crisis, famine, natural disasters. And so one place in the world is going to be a safe zone, which is what I believe many people will consider and flock there. Autonomous teams with Oracle and NVIDIA to boost AI adoption across Neom and Saudi Arabia and empower innovation. So this is the latest development. On their actual website, am I there? There you go. On their YouTube channel, if you go to videos, they post on here quite regularly. Two days ago, there was another video. Neom in progress. Okay. I mean, if you watch these videos, you see it's a beautiful location. There's no doubt, you know, let's consider the location however the lord god in the word of god considers this location and the wider region a wicked place a place of harlotry of fornication of spiritual adultery why is that it's because israel i believe is going to be heavily in, um, involved in this location not only that if the abraham accords goes ahead Israel will, clo will grow closer in alliance with Saudi Arabia, furthering this animosity between Israel, Iran and Saudi Arabia. Interesting. Let's go back to the homepage. Invest in Neom. What is Neom? A place, regions. My goodness gracious. Regions. Okay, let's have a look. So they're developing, and this is what I was looking at on the world map earlier. 
I was going to Trojena. I mean, if you see the videos, it is pretty amazing what they've done. But where do you think all the materials come from, friends, to develop this in a desert nation? In a desert nation surrounded by many waters. Import. They import everything, right? Think of it this way. With... There were some photos here that I wanted to show you. Latest. All right, let's have a look what the developments are. This is going to end up being a long video, I know. The last time I did a long video using this particular software, it took hours to upload. Like, I mean, look at this. This is Babylon the Great, you guys. <laughs> it is a beautiful place. It's a futuristic city. It's got a bit of everything. It's very economic. It's very um, green friendly. Solar pow uh, powered and what have you. Solar powered. And the whole world is going to flop. There's a lot of people leaving reviews on here. I've read them. I went through them all. And um, there's a mixture of reviews. People are going there to also visit this location. The mountain of God. Jebel Allah. So the Lord has put this region back on the map for the world's attention. And I believe it's very significant. Where's the image I had earlier? I had a nice graphic here I wanted to share with you. Let me see. Let's put this map up here. Hmm. View. Zoom out. Just so we can get a better view. Zoom out. Okay, there you go. Look at the location. The relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia are complex, yes? And they, they've basically evolved over time. But it's a very complicated situation. Historically, the two countries have been enemies, with Saudi Arabia refusing to recognise Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. But in recent years, there have been indications of a possible shift in this relationship. The location, again, very interesting location. Do you remember when I showed you the picture, the map, this island here, Suwakin Island, it's a little island here that Turkey has leased from Sudan, strategically located across the Red Sea. I believe this is all strategic for the military invasion that is coming. Gog and Magog, chapter 38, chapter 39. The Lord is showing us the military invasion of the Gog's armies already in the scriptures and we can see it happening. We see what the intention of the Gog armies are going to be, how they're going to do the invasion, right? There it is down here, actually, Port of Sudan, right down here. Look what's across, Mecca. And you know, there are Islamic prophecies that Mecca is going to come under attack. I've got to save it for another video. Oh my goodness, Fred, so much to talk about. Islamic prophecies, I spoke about this before, but I will do a separate video. Let me make a note of it. Where's my pen? Islamic end times <clears throat> talk about Mecca coming under attack right before the Imam Mahdi is revealed. Funnily enough, the scriptures already talk about Arabia being invaded by Elam, according to the book of Isaiah. So, so there's indications that Israel and Saudi Arabia are going to normalize there's some signs that that's going to happen but one of the main factors that have contributed to this shift is the shared concern over Iran's nuclear program they're trying to contain Iran or form a southern alliance the southern bloc like I always say to defer or to push back Iran so both Israel and Saudi Arabia view Iran as a threat to their security and their stability. It's not just a threat to Israel, no. Iran's nuclear potential capabilities and the rhetoric that was always coming out of Iran, the hostility, the aggression, launching rockets with death to Israel plastered over their rockets, is a threat also to Saudi Arabia. 
So this has led to increased communication, cooperation between the two countries, right? Especially in intelligence and military coordination. Mohammed bin Salman, the current Crown Prince, has taken a more modern approach to governing, hence New York City. And they want to expand, yes, they want to expand, become more Western and introduce more social reforms, right? Anyway, despite all these developments, friends, there's still significant obstacles for full normalization, hence the Palestinian issue. That's the main one. And also the Temple Mount. In the scriptures, I'm just eager to get into the word. I want to get there now. Architects newspaper. Let me get this out of the way with earlier last week. A multimedia exhibit in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, reveals more details about Neom's linear city, the line. So, it's continuing to be developed, right? They're promoting it. They've got investors worldwide, media is involved. It's just going to be a massive thing. How much time do we have? <clears throat> I don't want to talk about the timelines. Let's get into the word. Because time is running out. Are you ready? Now, the most important part of my video is now beginning. In the book of Joel. Hallelujah. Now, let's understand. These scriptures I'm going to present to you today are showing you the heart of God. His mind. We are told to have the mind of Christ. Yes. I want to get in the Lord's mind and I want to know what he's saying. What does he see? And zoom out and see the bigger picture. So, according to this particular chapter in the book of Joel, it reads, For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem. So, what days? What is the time? When the Lord brings back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes. Now, in 1948, it began already. But the Lord God hasn't literally come down and gathered his people from all four corners yet. That time is coming. So this is yet to be realised. Here we go. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. The judgment, the valley of God's judgment. And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. Why was the scattering even a thing? Because the land was divided. The people were overthrown. They were cast out. They were persecuted. They were killed, right? They've been, um, um, they've been mocked. They have also divided up my land. They have cast lots for my people. So this is why I say the Lord takes it personally. Do we understand that? Look, when a father, let's say parents, if something happens to your children they've been attacked or they've been persecuted you take it personally yes you touch my child you touch me you're messing with my kids you're messing with me so naturally the lord god who is also titled as the holy one of israel takes this very personally if you're messing with his people who he said are my people and his land my heritage you're messing with him you see so now if you are a muslim and you're listening to me understand this we don't hate you we love the muslims we love the islamic world we pray for them even though even though despite the persecution of christians across the islamic world is at its most horrific ever in human history. We love you still. Because the Lord our God told us to love our enemies. To pray for those who persecute us. 
to bless those who are mean. But you have to understand that in our Bible, which was revealed over centuries before the Quran was ever formed, has specific information about the Islamic world, about the peoples of the Islamic world, and about the surrounding nations. Let me get my map. The surrounding nations who are hostile against Jerusalem. Because in the Islamic mindset, Israel is unjustified in having their own Jewish state. They have no right to the land. The land belonged. So the Palestinian cause have their own justifications for their campaign. Okay. There are atrocities committed on both sides of the fence. Let's put it that way. But majority of the hostility, the aggression, the provocations come from the Palestinian movement. The security wall is up there for a reason, yes? I believe the security wall could come down if Saudi Arabia and Israel come to some sort of agreement in the future. Because somebody from the Arabian Peninsula, I believe, will give security to Israel. And Saudi Arabia wants to look good, it wants to be the champion of the Palestinian cause. It's very possible Saudi Arabia will be that entity so understand this my muslim friend my muslim listener we don't hate you we love you but there's a, um, a zealousness that comes when we read the scriptures our holy texts especially when we are quoting the god of israel please listen to the heart of god they've also divided up my land they've cast lots for my people indeed what have i to do what have you to do with me, to do with me? So the persecution, the division of the land, the scattering of the people, the Lord is saying, why are you doing this to me? Just like Saul on his way to Damascus, when the Lord Jesus appeared to him, who was a zealot, Paul, was a radical, was an extremist, was killing and persecuting Christians, Jesus Christ appears to him and says to Paul, why do you persecute me? He takes it personal. You see, our God is intricately connected with his church, with his people. He loves his people with an everlasting love. Don't mess with the people of God. Because there will be repercussions. O Tyre and Sidon and all the coasts of Philistia. Palestinian territory. Lebanese territory. Will you retaliate against me? Who's retaliating against the Lord? Those who retaliate against Israel are retaliating against the Lord. This is the conclusion we have to make, logically, yes? So the Lord God is going to judge the peoples who are retaliating against his people. Let's put it that way, paraphrasing. Because you've taken my silver, my gold, carried captive into your temples, my prized possessions, also the people of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, you have sold to the Greeks or the western lands, that you may remove them far from their borders or Yavan, Behold, I will raise them out of the place to which you have sold them. I will return your retaliation upon your own head. So, hmm. East Jerusalem peoples who want to divide the land. The Lord is saying, you who are dividing up my land. and retaliate against me swiftly and speedily he will return that retaliation on your own head so this is a very serious matter this is not a joke this we're not playing games here you see 
So, very, very serious situation we've got here. <clears throat> Proclaim this among the nations. I've got more scriptures, got to move on. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. The time of this seemingly peace is over. Now's the time to fight. This is only going to happen when the Lord returns, by the way. And your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations. If you think you're bad, if you want to annihilate free, free Palestine from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Really, then the Lord challenges you. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for I will sit there to judge all the surrounding nations. Where's my little graphic? Where did I go? Where did I put it? <clears throat> surrounding nations. You see, Satan, in his cunning, has devised this, like I've said. How many of you remember me saying this? The outfit is of Islam, the system. It's a system. It's not a religion. It's not a political movement. It's a system of various facets that come together to form this vehicle. It's a vehicle that the enemy has designed in order to welcome the beast so when he shows up all he has to do is get into the driver's seat and bam it's already set up for him this is all set up for that region to absolutely surround suffocate and corner jerusalem this is grand zero so the lord is going to have these surrounding nations come to the valley of Jehoshaphat. He's going to sit there and judge all the surrounding nations. I believe this is where he makes his enemies his footstool because he's sitting there to judge. I will put, put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come go down for the winepress is full. Their wickedness is great. Do you understand this? According to the God of the Bible, the Holy One of Israel, according to him, he considers this peoples, the surrounding nations, as wicked. So wicked that their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. You see, this is at the time when the Lord is going to return. This isn't Israel let me just make sure I make this point clear so nobody misunderstands me or intentionally twists my words because that happens all the time. I'm fed up of it. This is not talking about Israel as the Jewish state, the secular, democratic, whatever state today. And it is secular. It's not a Jewish state. They don't have any autonomy over their own city. How anyone going to tell me it's a Jewish state? No, it's not. Majority of the Jews in Israel are secularists. A majority of them don't want the rebuilding of the third temple, by the way. It's just a hand for a fringe movement. However, this is not about the state of Israel going to war against the surrounding nations, against Hezbollah, or Hezbollah rather. Hamas this is about the Lord coming down sitting to judge the surrounding nations this is as literal as it can possibly get the sun and moon will grow dark and the stars will diminish their brightness the Lord also will roar from Zion you see he's present in the land to do the judgment the Lord also will roar from Zion, he still considers it Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem. 
and that worldwide impact of the earthquake will be felt worldwide basically is what I want to say the heavens and the earth will shake but the Lord will be a shelter for his people you know we skip over these words like it's just mentioned to dramatize the moment this is literally going to happen the creator think of it this way the creator of the heavens and the earth himself is going to come down no wonder the heavens and the earth are going to shake at his presence which is also mentioned in ezekiel 38 by the way but the lord will be a shelter for his people you see the contrast because daddy's coming back daddy's coming home everything's gonna be okay but the lord will be a shelter for his people so if you want to be a part of his people we have to be grafted in it's very simple the gospel is simple we just call upon the name of the lord we turn from our wicked ways and he will receive us as simple as i can make it we call upon the name of the lord the lord is the god of israel you got to get over it. There's one way that's been made available to us. His name is Jesus Christ. What's the way? The way that he is himself is the way to the Father. <laughs> Nobody's got access to the Father unless we come through the way, which is Jesus. Okay? The strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy. No alien shall ever pass through her again. The final verse. For the Lord dwells in Zion. So anti-Zionists understand this. The Lord is coming back to dwell in Zion. There's more to say. How long have I been at it? <clears throat> Come near you nations to hear and heed Isaiah 34. Let the earth hear and all that is in it, the world and all things that come forth from it. For the indignation of the Lord is against all nations and his fury against all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them, has given them over to the slaughter. You must read this together with Ezekiel 38. Also their slain shall be thrown out, their stench shall rise from their corpses, and the mountain shall melt with their blood. Very graphic, very violent, isn't it? What's the particular place in this chapter that is the zoom in focus? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Wow, this is righteous judgment coming. You understand? For the sword to be bathed in heaven, this is righteous holy justified indignation so we haven't got a leg to stand on to oppose this judgment nobody indeed it shall come down on edom and on the people of my curse for judgment oh <clears throat> there's edom this is one of, of the many maps if you're searching and researching for edom it's basically here some places it's here some places it's from jordan south didan timan mentioned in the book of isaiah interesting is this a coincidence you guys i think not The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made overflowing with fatness. He has a sacrifice. The Lord has a sacrifice in Bozra, which is southern Jordan. A great slaughter in the land of Edom. So it's widespread. It is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. I've spoken about these scriptures so many times. 
in my older videos so I'm not just skipping over these I've, I've done videos that are one hour two hour long where I read them in their context we have to read them from beginning to end the book even to understand the bigger picture it's the day of the Lord's vengeance the year of recompense for the cause of Zion and when he judges this land is going to run with oil its streams shall be turned into pitch and its dust into brimstone its land shall become burning pitch there's a lot of oil there it's all going to go up in flames Ezekiel 39 the burial of Gog there's so much to this friends if you read on to this verse here we're coming to the end now of the Gog Magog the coalition's destruction because the Lord is going to destroy the armies we're coming to the end of that now look what happens and as for you son of man thus says the Lord God speak to every sort of bird and to every beast of the field assemble yourselves and come gather together from all sides to my sacrificial meal which I'm sacrificing for you the Lord is going to utterly destroy the Antichrist beast and have Babylon the Great destroyed. So now I want us to take another quick look. Whatever nations in the yellow join the alliance of the north or the south are going to be destroyed in judgment. But there will be remnants of those who have been caught up in the crosshairs, who are for the Lord and who are for righteousness, who speak up and stand up for the truth, I believe those people will be spared. So this is very serious. Again, I repeat, this is not a joke. In Ezekiel 39, read it all. It continues after the sacrificial meal is completed that Israel is going to be restored to the land so when the Lord has judged his enemies the land will be cleansed from all the blood or the bloodshed then the land will be sanctified considered holy and then it will be set apart to the Lord and I believe this is describing the millennium period the weapons are going to be burnt they're going to be burying the all the casualties of the Gog and Magog armies. In Obadiah, <clears throat> we have another portion of scripture. Obadiah considered a minor prophet, not because he was less important, but because of the size of the prophecies. It's a very small book. This is all about Edom. However, there's also mention here of a treachery. So Edom is in alliance. But those who are in alliance with Edom are treacherous. But the Lord is going to use this treachery to judge Edom. Very, very apt, I would say. Thus is the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord. A messenger has been sent among the nations saying, Arise, let us rise up against her for battle. You see that? You see that there? This is the enemies of Edom who are saying, arise, let us rise up against her for battle. So this region is going to come under attack. Let me get my little map back out. I've got the wrong one. No, that one. Okay, let's say this is it, right? This is Edom. This is actually highlighting where Neom is. Arise against her, let us come up to battle. Well, who do you suppose is willing to rise up and is preparing to rise up? <clears throat> Maybe something to do with these kings of the east. Look at this whole region here, Iran. Here's the river Euphrates down here. Let me close that. Here's the river Euphrates drying up. 
This is in order that foot soldiers, soldiers on foot, can easily cross over. So not only will they have potential air power, they'll also have an army on foot. This could fall in line <clears throat> with the, the Islamic prophecies. Remember, Satan is cunning, yes? He strategically plots and schemes because he knows what's coming. So he's designed a system to fight back, yes? He, he thinks he's being smart. So this invasion comes down after the river is dried up. We've got all these regions here going to go up and come down here and fight and we'll have the Turkish armies down here I'll have to zoom out now where's Sudan there you go Port Sudan and they'll invade this way right so the whole land is going to be surrounded okay even though they are in agreement with Edom. Behold, I'll make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. Wow. The pride of your heart has deceived you. Who's he talking to? Edom. The mountains of Esau. It goes back to the enmity between Jacob and Esau. The Jews and the Arab peoples today. Let's put it that way. You who dwell in the clefts of the rock. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whose habitation is high. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Whose habitation is high? Well, we know. Let me just put in. Have you ever seen this place in Saudi Arabia? Well, it's going to be a part of their tourism project. They're going to get more people to come visit here. Al-Ula, another ancient city which is a part of the chain of buildings of Petra. It's like the mini Petra, which is southern Jordan. Are there any more photos I can show you? Let's see. Here you go. Photos. His habitation is high. He dwells in the clefts of the rocks. So this, this whole thing regarding Edom is ancient. It goes back a long, long time. There's something about this that the Lord considers wickedness. These were known to be used to worship the dead, I believe. Is that right? Tombs of the dead. Caves, caverns. These are huge. I mean, the, the, I don't know if you can make out the dimensions. But these, these buildings carved out of rock are huge massive so Saudi Arabia has put this location on their tourism map in order to attract the world's tourism I'm just saying <clears throat> is it possible you know that the Lord is using such terminology so we might be able to better understand what it is he's saying Whose habitation is high. And we know about the skyscrapers across the Arabian Peninsula. So this pride. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you ascend as high as the eagle, skyscrapers. And having this anticipation or aspiration rather to reach the heavens. It's very um, Luciferian, satanic. And though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. <clears throat> oh, how Esau shall be searched out. How his hidden treasure, treasures shall be sought after. All the men in your confederacy, so Edom is a part of a confederacy, shall force you to the border. All of them are going to turn their back against her. Sounds like the beast turning onto the harlot, yes? The men at peace with you shall deceive you and prevail against you. Those who eat your bread shall lay a trap for you. No one is aware of it, but guess what? We are. We are now aware of it because the Lord has revealed it to us. Will I not in that day, says the Lord, 
even destroy the wise men from Edom, and understanding from the mountains of Esau, then your mighty men, O Timan, shall be dismayed, to the end that every one from the mountains of Esau shall be cut off by Saluda. And why is all this happening? For violence against your brother Jacob. <clears throat> that enmity never ended, you see. It continued to modern day. Shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captive his forces. So this already happened in history, if you look up. The invasion of Jerusalem. How the Edomites allowed it and celebrated it. Look it up, but it's going to repeat. The, the episode is going to repeat. When foreigners entered these gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. Please read all of this. All of these scriptures that I'm, I'm picking out, I want you to read them in their entirety. Let's do some serious Bible study now. For the day of the Lord is upon all nations. For you have done, it shall be done to you. But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions, meaning all the places where they were told to give up the land, they're going to reclaim it, and it's going to be greater. This is the real Greater Israel project. Not the conspiracy version that floats around in the Islamic world, no. The house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame. You see, they're going to reclaim the land. The tribes of Israel will reclaim the land. The captives of Jerusalem shall possess the cities. Moving on. Isaiah 21. <clears throat> Arabia, Edom, all mentioned in this one chapter. But uh, to understand, we also need to read this alongside the book of Revelation. This is going to be a long video. I hope I don't have trouble uploading it. Okay. Lord help. Please help. I can't stop now. The fall of Babylon proclaimed. But this is in Isaiah. What Babylon? You see, Babylon is Babylon, yes? You can't reinvent Babylon. It's in Iraq, Syria. <clears throat> but is this possible? That the Lord is talking about spiritually the end times Babylon. Which is like a type of the former Babylon. But is even greater. So the Babylon today is connected to the Babylon of old. It's the same system. The same idolatrous worship. Remember in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. In the days of Daniel, how this image was set up and everyone was told to bow down and worship it any time they heard the call for prayer. That is what Islam is today. In fact, the call of prayer goes out five times a day and the devouts, dev devotees, the faithful, have to bow down, get on their knees and face Mecca. Oh, you see what happens when I start talking about this? There's more to say. There's, there's always more to say. A burden against the wilderness of the sea. Wilderness or desert of the sea. Hmm. <laughs> this whole area is a desert surrounded by many waters. And to remind you, they actually show this in a lot of their footages. Let me get a video, a quick short one. Uh, let's see, how far back do I need to go? Be a part of the legend, oh really? Okay, hold on. You see now we, we zoom out, right? We zoom out and we get to see what the Lord is trying to reveal to us. And it's plain to see. If you have eyes to see, you can see it. Let's watch this one. I don't know. Let's see. To discover a place like Neom is such a privilege and makes me feel even more connected to home. 
I think this is Orion, but I'm not sure. You know those three stars? It's just so peaceful. I love what Yom stands for. Sustainability, looking at the future, Look at opportunity. Those rocks. These are all things that speak to me. That was a desert land surrounded by waters. To see more, you just got to go to their channel and watch and just be fascinated with the accuracy of the Word of God. Amazing. As whirlwinds, let me turn my mic around. Hold on one moment. As whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it comes from the desert from a terrible land. A distressing vision is declared to me. The treacherous dealer deals treacherously. There you go. There's the backstabbing. The ones who betray her. And the plunderer plunders. Go up, O Elam, besiege O Media, which is in Iran territory today. So the command goes out to these peoples to besiege. To besiege you, the person, the entity, the wilderness of the sea. And look, I'm, I'm skipping through as much as I can. Because I want to make sure this important upload is posted without any problems. And look, here comes a chariot of men with a pair of horsemen. Then he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the carved images of her gods he has broken to the ground. Babylon, according to the Lord, is the same Babylon back in the days of old, which is the worship of Baal. It's rooted in Baal worship. Oh, my threshing and the grain of my floor, that which I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have declared it to you. The burden against Duma. Uh, that graphic I had up, let me just go back there one more time. This whole region here is going to come under attack. Edom is in trouble. All this modern development of this modern city is going to be under attack. Even though it might look like these nations are going to agree with Saudi Arabia, Abraham Accords and yeah, let's all join in. It's not going to end well. Proclamation against Arabia. In the forest in Arabia you will lodge, you travelling companies of Dedanites, O inhabitants of the land of Tima, bring water to his thirsty. Why? It's the time of distress, for they fled from the sword, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and from the distress of war. For thus the Lord has said to me, Within a year, according to the year of a hide man, all the glory of Kedar, which is that whole area in Arabia, and the remainder of the number of archers, the mighty men of the people of Kedar, will be diminished, for the Lord God of Israel has spoken it. So all the glory of Kedar will fall, says Isaiah 21. In Isaiah 63, again, judgment on Edom is describing Jesus Christ, as mentioned in the book of Revelation in chapter 19, how his garments are drenched in blood because he's been in the wine press. This is the indignation with which the Lord is going to crush his enemies. You see what I'm saying? This is so serious. Who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? In fact, I suggest, I don't know how long ago, but Brother Joel Richardson, some time ago, he did a video <clears throat> about this um, moment where Jesus Christ comes and does this and he shows it to you i don't know how long ago that was a couple of years ago watch it find it on youtube who is this who comes to me with dyed garments from bozra and when you do when you leave a comment let him know that i sent you there okay i who speak in righteousness mighty to save why is your apparel red glory glory this is jesus christ you guys that like we've never seen before 
Why is your apparel red and your garments like one who treads in the winepress? And he says, I have trod in the winepress alone and from the peoples no one was with me. This act is reserved for the master himself, Jesus Christ. I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my fury. Their blood is sprinkled upon my garments. You know, this is incredibly graphic information. It's a very bloody scripture because this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. For the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed has come. This is how the Redeemer will redeem. I looked but there was no one to help and I wondered that there was no one to uphold. You see, the people who stand up for righteousness are going to be scarce in the end times. There's not going to be anyone who's going to be standing up for righteousness. And the Lord has done it that way. Therefore my own arm brought salvation for me and my own fury, it sustained me. I have trodden down the peoples in my anger, made them drunk in my fury and brought down their strength to the earth. Hallelujah. A same location. Now, I'll have to do a separate study on this one. This is a glorious book, the book of Jeremiah. It This deserves its own special video, so bear with me. I'll have to prepare that. To do it justice, I'll have to prepare its own special message, friends. In Revelation 18, the fall of Babylon the Great is mentioned here. But we also saw how it's already mentioned in the book of Isaiah. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. You see, this place of luxury has entangled all the nations because all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth commit fornication with her and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. But the Lord God remembers He knows her for what she really is. Come out of her, my people. So this is a warning to all those who believe in the Lord Jesus. And they are over 2 million people living in Arabia who are believers. Most of them are slaves, immigrants that go there to work. And they're not allowed to worship in open. You need to come out of her. You need to leave and get the heck out of Arabia. God doesn't want his people to have anything to do with this place called wickedness. Do you understand? Oh my darling friends, I will continue with the message because there's so much more I want to share and um, I need to do it thoroughly. Maybe I'll do a part two. How's that? I'll do a part two. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining me. Friends, keep them in your prayer. Keep the Islamic world in your prayer, please. Pray for my family. My brother, he watches all my posts on YouTube. His name is Zishan. He watches everything I post up, my community posts, the videos I put up, and he doesn't like it. He's told me and he's actually blocked me from communicating with him. Please pray for my family. I pray that the Lord will reveal to them the truth, that they will know that this isn't about hatred, but this is like a person, a watchman. I'm, I'm a watchman warning, crying out. It's not easy what I do here, you guys. It's not... Like, I do this for fun, you know. Oh, this is my pastime. Like, I've got no other interests. This is a burden on my heart, you see. I have a calling from the Lord. I have to do this. And I'm telling you now, it's not easy. The spiritual battles that I go through, the warfare, the attacks, they're not easy, you guys. Anyway, keep my family in your prayers. Pray for them. I'm going to continue with the message. Oh, before I go, before I go, I wanted to remind you, let me refresh it. I set up my my shop online. So this is another way for you to support me. This is on the website called Et 
C, as you can see here, Etsy. I've got my own online shop and I'm just adding things to it as I go. Let me zoom out so you can see a bit more of it. <laughs> I'm zoomed in so much because I like the text on the screen to be large. Here's my shop. Isn't that lovely? Look at this, you guys. This will help me. You know what I'm saying? As an income, it will help me. I've got to do something, you guys. It takes time to put information together. I don't want to go outside the house to get a job because everything is minimum wage. I want to do something that I'm smart and and I can do working from home while I prepare messages, while I'm looking out for my cats that I look after. And that's a whole other story. But check out my shop. I just uploaded this yesterday. I've got a special offer going on. <laughs> it's going to end in 10 hours. But there's some beautiful creations that I designed to sell. These are digital files. So what you do, you download them after you've made your purchase. And you print them. And you can frame them. Very cost effective. A cheap way to get some nice wall art. And I've also <clears throat> got an Amazon shop. Which is of what a lot of people are doing nowadays what happens is you get approached to buy certain programs and they say look we see you have a following would you like to be an affiliate i'm like all right if i'm just a middle person that's easy you know be the middle person just to tell people if you already shop on amazon why don't you shop through my shop i'll at least get a little bit of a commission from it anyway i've got these folders on here I try to organise them in categories. There's outdoor and garden, Christian materials. I'll, I'll keep the link in the description. So let's say, for example, let's say there's a Bible here. You buy a Bible from Amazon. How much is this? You can get it in a leather bound, a spiral bound. So you make a purchase. I'll probably get a little percentage of that price um, as a commission. And that's it. That's how it works. So that's worth it. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's pretty straightforward. I wanted to show you also this portrait. <clears throat> you see the portraits that I did. I don't know if you got to see them. But they're on my Etsy shop. <laughs> Check it out. Let's see. I hope you like this one too. This took me a few hours getting this together, I tell you. But I'm happy with it. Happy how it turned out. So you could print a digital file and print it on whatever. You can print it on card paper. You can have it printed on a canvas, have it done professionally. It's a lot cheaper than buying a canvas printed. So I got this scripture, be still and know that I am God. <laughs> I hope you like it. Anyway, friends, what else do I want to say? I'm on Twitter as well. <clears throat> As I mentioned before that I'm on Twitter. I've just started my profile on there. Where's my page? There's my page there. Everything is refreshing again. Because I haven't opened it up since uh, last night. So there's my Twitter page. Where's my main profile? Uh, obviously don't know how to use it yet. But anyway friends. Remember to keep Israel in your prayers. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, friends, and um, I will be back again soon. Here's the video. I'm trying to look for it. I want to play this video because it's a lovely worship song, and you've probably heard me play it before. But you see, now it's refreshing, huh? It's a wonderful song. It's a hymn, basically. It's an old hymn. It's refreshing. Let's see how much I can play. I'll be back again soon, like I said. The Lord loves you. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe, you guys. Let's sing this song as I go out. The Lord Jesus be praised.
wonderful. I'll be back again soon, friends.